can you hear Bishop Yambasu's voice borrowing from the letter to the Romans? Nothing separates us from the love of Christ, not a thing. And perhaps it was this knowledge that drove John Yambasu's passion to work for unity. It was this that drove his deepest passions to help the most vulnerable. When he could not stand the thought of children going to bed hungry, he responded. We could not stand the thought that those in need of health care were not being cared for, he responded. When he faced the church he loved divided, he could not stand it, he responded. John Yambasu was a man that lived out of his convictions. His understanding that nothing ought to separate you from the love of God, nothing. So friends, John Yambasu's funeral has been preached. Not by me, not by those who have come before me and those who will come after me. John Yambasu's sermon has been preached by John Yambasu. He preached his own funeral sermon by the way he lived out his everyday life. He preached his sermon by being the voice of Jesus when it needed to be heard. He preached his sermon when he responded to the needs of the least and the lost. He preached his sermon when he said enough is enough. After the February 2019 General Conference, he preached his sermon the day he brought persons together from different theological ideologies and said, let's talk. He preached his sermon when he traveled time after time to Washington, D.C. and pleaded with the mediation team. Offered were these. Do you not know that a great prince in Israel has fallen? That's the way I feel about Bishop John Yambasu. I am mourning his death, but the opportunity to say a few words about him is a gift to me, and I hope also to those who hear it. Because John Yambasu is one of the easiest people, not only to get along with, but to talk about. He was consistent in every way in his love for the Lord, his love for his family, his love for the United Methodist Church, his love for his beloved country, Sierra Leone, his love for the mission of the church. And so I want to say that he had a consistency in his life that all of us should strive for. You never knew not where John Yambasu was on any particular matter and where he stood on a matter did not put him in opposition to you as a fellow Christian, as a fellow human being. So I segue to saying that he was a natural bridge builder in a world of brokenness and pain where people spend more time and energy building walls. John Yambasu saw every wall and turned it on its side, even if it crumbled in its falling and out of its pieces, he built bridges. He was, and I conclude with this, a man of God who was completely without deceit and without guile and filled only with love, compassion, and hope. Rest in peace, rest in power, Bishop John Yambasu. Well, Isaiah 42 speaks to me very clearly on this way. You know, God says, uh, I will be with you no matter what. You will walk through the water and you will never be drowned. You walk through the fire and the heat will not scotch you. John K. Yambasu was born in poverty in southern Sierra Leone. Coming from Africa, and for that matter from a poor family background, I know through and through what poverty is. I have slept with it and I have woken up with it. As a child I went to school with tattered uniforms and often without shoes. I was severely driven from school for non-payment of fees. Countless times I went to bed 
without food. As a missionary working in Sub-Saharan Africa, I have not only experienced poverty, but for almost 10 years I had to wrestle with it. Today, as bishop of the church and working in my own home country, Sierra Leone, I live side by side with poverty and misery. He grew up attending United Methodist Mission Schools, where he learned about God and came to have a deep abiding love for the United Methodist Church. Throughout his life, before he was bishop, he had many titles, teacher, deacon, elder, missionary, community leader, but the one title he most cherished was beloved child of God. So I remember one of my first encounters with Bishop John Yambasu. It's my first trip to Freetown and you land in one of those old helicopters and uh, we got out of the helicopter. I was traveling with a team for Imagine No Malaria and there uh, almost on the tarmac is John Yambasu waiting for us. He made sure that we had everything we needed. He got our luggage and we went over to Freetown. I learned on this trip that John Yambasu was more than a pastor. He was more than a bishop. He was a statesman. Everywhere we went, he knew everyone and everyone knew him. And when we gathered for worship, that morning, I looked around and I also realized that day that he was an ecumenical leader. So we were there representing the United Methodist Church. Every possible denomination, every faith community was represented at this worship service. The Imam, the tribal leaders, everyone was a part of this service. And John Yambasu led that service he was a statesman in every, every stretch of your imagination, and he was a pastor, a pastor to all of those people everywhere we went, hospitals we visited, schools where we went, everywhere we went. You could see that John Yambasu had poured his heart into every single one of those persons, not just the place, but the people. I learned more on that trip about what it means to be a bishop. I wasn't a bishop yet, but I remember watching John, watching Bishop John Yambasu, and understanding those words in the Book of Discipline when it says that we are responsible for the temporal and spiritual oversight of the church. John Yambasu taught me that. He taught me what it means to be a faith leader, not just in the United Methodist Church, but a faith leader in all parts of the community, all parts of God's kingdom. So I'm thankful for the mentor that I had in Bishop John Yambasu, for his teaching, teaching by living, teaching by being an example and his gentle, gentle and joyous spirit always. He was ordained a United Methodist Deacon in 1987, an elder in 1990. In the fall of 1999, the Reverend Yamba Sue traveled to the United States with a fervent hope of finding help for children who were orphaned or abandoned during the long civil war in his country. He founded the Child Rescue Center in Sierra Leone, serving as its executive director until he became a regional missionary in 2000. His experience as a missionary taught him how crucial health is in the life of any. Grace has brought me 
has been our dwelling place. All generations. They fall the mountains we are brought forth or ever. Thou hast formed the earth and the world. We are the Thou turnest man back to the dust. And sayest no back to the children of men. For a thousand years in the fight I got as yesterday when it is past. All has to watch the night. Thou dost keep men away. They are like a dream. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. For we are consumed by the anger. Thou dost set our iniquities before thee. For all our days we passed away under the wrath. Stepping from Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 1 to 11. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sue. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time of war, and a time of peace. What profit, that he worketh in that wherein he laboreth, I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to exercise in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. This is the word of God. The reader is Dr. Emmanuel Yambasu. I think there's a change. We now have Ms. Adima Yambasu for the episode. Good morning, church. A 
stand here to celebrate one of the greatest men that ever walked the surface of the earth and is still walking the surface of the earth. What an honor and a blessing to be reading one of my father's favorite scriptures, and that is Paul's second letter to the people of Corinth, chapter 4, verse 1 to 13. Paul's letter to the people of Corinth, which is 2 Corinthians 4, 1 to 13. And I read, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we fail not. But I renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not working in things of craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is he to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in our vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I can hear him read, We are troubled on every side, yet we are not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. And I can hear him read on, persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but we are not destroyed always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, for the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death walketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore I have spoken. We always believe and therefore speak the word of the Lord for the people of God. We shall continue the service with item number eight, in number three. Sometimes our life surprises. Let us please rise.
for international partners. We come back home and listen to two days from, from us. And we will start with the family. Okay, so here lies the mortal remains of my dad, Bishop John K. Ambassu. He was a father, husband. He was really everything to us. I have literally shared my dad with the church ever since we were born. Like, all he knew was church. So, he barely really had time with the family, but we are happy he spent his life with God 24-7. All he did was talk about church, talk about God, and he's a really great man of God. And we are so happy we're not mourning because we know he lived for Christ and he's in heaven right now looking down on us. So I just want to do a song and then my brother will do a tribute.
is running after us With my life laid down, I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after, it's running after me Tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Chases me down, fights till I fell, leaves the night denied. And I couldn't learn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. Only overwhelming, never ending, reckless love.
Every email I had from my dad was between Sunday and 6 a.m. My mom will always be shouting, honey, go sleep, get some rest. He never stopped, he was always working. He sacrificed so much for us as children to be able to get this far. He made sure every single one of us was educated. My sisters just got the masters and it's sad he was not here to celebrate with them when they came back. There was a time we were watching um, an advert on CNN and I was like, Bob, you should get a real life to say it. I can, but you guys will have to stay home for one year. So that was the sacrifices he had to make so we could be where we are today. He continued sacrificing so much and when he became bishop, like my brother said, we had to start now sharing him with the church. He was always busy and always working. And family time was also sacrificed. I mean, I could remember there was a point my mom actually took his car key and said, Money to the window side. She closed the door, but he found a way, took the spare key, walked all the way to the top of the house and grabbed a cab just because he wanted to get to work and do what he was supposed to do. Over the last year, it has gotten pretty serious and I was always, always tired. So, um, my mom called me up last year and then she says, I have been talking to your dad. I think you should do the same. My sisters did, my brother did. So I sent him an email that was 2019 and I'm going to share part of that email with you. It was on October 7, 2019. I said, Hi, Dad. Hope your flight was pleasant and you have rested well. I have some few concerns we should discuss when you get back, but would like to bring them to your attention now. I said, Your help. Dad, you look tired and worn out. Everybody's worried about you. Manny has called several times this week, and the girls have been texting to Mommy's also concerned, and she has been asking me to talk to you. I understand you have a vision of the task. It is not easy, but you also need to understand you have a family who loves you, and you have to slow down. God rested, Christ rested. Your dreams will come true. There is so much one person can do. I am attaching the words of Bishop Ken Buchner, and I hope it speaks to you. So I'll read the attachment. It was a poem by a bishop, and it says, It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our effort, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete which is a way of saying that the kingdom, is all, the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statesman says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant seeds that we want. that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there's a sense of liberation in realizing that. It's maybe incomplete, but it is the beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end result, but there's a difference between the master and the builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. He was a prophet. He had visions, he had dreams, and he wanted to do so much. I'm glad we all gathered here today, but it's sad that it took death for us to rally like this. He wanted to start a university, and he kept on going about that, but only a handful of people were able to support that dream. Year after year, my dad would stand here saying, I do not have a car. But that never happened even to his death. But now we're here by an expensive casket building two stones. It doesn't matter, he's gone. We should love people while they're alive. We should support them and be there for them. All of this is just because of conscience. He was a great man, and I hope the seeds he planted will be watered. I hope the foundations he started will be built upon. I hope we will not let his dreams and his vision die. Thank you.
that root that never dies. A name we would forever wear with pride. When you ask us whose children we are, we will gladly say, we are our father's children. A man who taught us to love God and to pray. I can still hear his voice calling on us to join in the world of worship. A man who taught us to give. I can still hear him say, honey, if you don't want this thing there, eh, I'll give you a man who taught us to stay humble in life, irrespective of our achievements. We saw that in his actions, each time he washed his own, his own dishes after eating. A man who lived a simple life, his wardrobe will tell you that. A man who forgave and saw the best in everyone. Daddy never held a grudge, and he believed in loving his enemies and praying for those who persecute him. A man who taught us to work hard. I still see him sitting by his PC early in the morning, finishing up his work. A man who taught us to do our part with joy. I can still see the fulfillment in his eyes when he accomplishes a task. I've had people say to me, I am yet to meet your parents, but I can only imagine how great they are just by meeting you. We are representatives of our Father. We are children of God, and we shall never bow down our heads in shame. Our glory shall never be stolen. Our Father's blood runs in our veins and we will carry a piece of him with us wherever we go. That even when we do not speak, our actions will show that we are our Father's children because we are representatives of our Father. To we who are here, one thing I've learned and I hope we practice is to give people their flowers while they can still smell them. Because truth is, funerals are not for the dead, but for the living. To my family, my mom, my siblings, my nephew, close friends and relatives. I leave you with words that he sent to me on April 2, 2020. He said, and I'll generalize, I know you must be feeling lonely and downcast, but you are not alone. God is with you, and he will care for you and provide all your needs. Stay safe and stay well. Thank you very much for those uh, soul-searching words. I'll achieve you to a great man. We'll invite the Liberia Angle Conference, led by the Dean of the Cabinet, Reverend Paul Gotham, Daxo, sorry, to bring words from Bishop Samuel Quire, who will not make it here today. Well, let us ask all of the librarian who are here with us to please rise. Around the same time, 
and he was very jovial and joined the UNC family in the celebration for the return of the, of the bishop's wife. Since then, I emerged into a glorious fellowship that already existed between Bishop John Yamasu and Bishop John G. Ellis. It was a relationship that was full of love, compassion, a relationship that, a respect that was based on the fear of God. This week, this weekend was one of the best times of my life when I felt the pleasure and joy of spending it with Bishop John Yamasu and others who truly share the joy of Christ's heart for me and my family. When his visit ended, Bishop John Yamasu returned home, but it was not long before I met Lady Sim and started to enjoy the gener her generosity, love, and kindness. Every time Lady Sim and I met, she made it her duty to give me a gift. Therefore, I know that Bishop Yamasu and his wife were very kind and generous people, were generous people. Bishop Yamasu love a passion for developing the church that Paul called him to give was, was a true indication that he has to, was the conversation that he kept with my husband, Bishop John G. Ellis. Listen, we, the five bishops pastors of the West African Central Conference, have come to identify with you and your children. Please remember that even though your husband's life and ministry was shortened by the evil of his untimely death, his memory will live in our hearts forever. We will miss on every level of the church. We will miss seeing you on the council of bishops. We are together forever. Be blessed as we assemble. Oh, medicine. The walk we walk, the talk we talk, when we were at the Bishop's Council, will forever be missed. We pray that the good Lord will comfort you, the children, and the seven year annual conference. God bless in Jesus' name. Tribute to the late Bishop John K. Yamazu. Chancellor of Africa University, President, African College of Bishops, Secretary, College of Bishops, West African Central Conference, Resident Bishop, Seriano Conference, the United Methodist Church. This sad event took place on Sunday, August 16. 2020 in a tragic motor accident. As a mark of our tradition, we shall call his name three times. Bishop John K. Yambazu. The Reverend Dr. John K. Yambazu. Bishop John K. Yambazu. He's no longer answering to his name, meaning that a transition has taken place. And he has gone on the other side with our ancestors. And Jesus awaits him for an official entry into life eternity. The late Reverend Dr. John K. Yamasu was a school teacher, a camp counselor a professional youth and student worker, a Christian educator, a director of youth and young adult ministries from the Sierra Arnold Conference, facilitator of youth and young adult ministries in the West African Central Conference, the General Board of Global Ministry and Missionary Hall, regional missionary of the, of the United Methodist Women to the South Saharan Africa. Bishop John K. Yamazu, where are you? We rejoice and celebrated your historic election as an Episcopal leader of the United Methodist 
church connection. When you were elected at the Martin Tuckman Memorial United Methodist Church in the Liberian Episcopal area in December 2018. Men, women, youth, young adults, children, students, clergy, and lay persons, praise God Almighty for the opportunity, for the opportunity given to you to be a shepherd of the people called United Methodists in Africa, in West Africa, in Africa, and in a global connection. Today, the bishop, district and circuit superintendent, elders, pastors, permanent deacons, lay people, conference officials, and members of the Liberia Arnold Conference United Methodist Church, and your people in Liberia are asking the question, where are you? We are not ready for you to go. But God has sounded the trumpet. And you have no option but to respond to the call of God from your labor to your reward. We, the people from Liberia and the conference, the United Methodist Church, and the citizens of the Republic of Liberia, come today to express our deepest condolences to Mama Bishop, where Millicent Yambasu, the children, the family, even the district superintendents, the conference officials, men, women, youth, and young adults, children, and the age of the Serena Honor Conference, and the government and people of Serena, the omnipotent and creating God of the universe has done it again. To it all, we'll also say thanks to the Almighty God for everything about your earthly journey, your breath, life, ministry, mission, and wisdom was a rewarding one for the United Methodist Church and for all those who came in contact with you from one point to another. May the soul of our mission and the souls of all impacted sinners to the mercies of God rest in peace and light perpetual shine on us. This tribute comes from Bishop Samuel Jeru Choir Jr. and from the choir, the conference acting lay leader, the dean and members of the bishop's cabinet, conference officials, the president of the various conference organizations, clergy and lay people, and the entire membership of the United Methodist Church in Liberia and the people of Liberia. May God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, at this point, I'm a bishop, this is Melissa's name, so we don't make a statement. But before I give a tribute, I want to leave you with a question. It's food for thought. Imagine your spouse leaves early in the morning on a journey. He goes and the next thing you hear in a few hours is that he's dead and his photos undignified are being paraded in social media all over the world. How would you feel? I want you to stand in my shoes. Thank you. I 
the love of my life, my soulmate, best friend, confidence, counselor, spiritual head and a loving father to my children. I thank God for the day I met you. 39 years ago, and I've always been grateful to God for such a wonderful gift. You are the best husband in the world. A loving, caring, and responsible father who made sure that your family lacked nothing. Even in those difficult days, you sacrificed everything to make us happy. You always quoted Psalm 37, 25 to us that your seed will never be a bread for your living. You were a disciplinarian who taught your children to love God and to live righteous lives. So be generous and kind to all, especially the poor and needy. So be respectful to everybody regardless of age or background. You exhibited some leadership in every area of your life. At home, you washed your plates after meals and sometimes did your own laundry. You maybe tried to put things in order in my own office as the kitchen, which I didn't like at all. You taught us not to settle for mediocrity, but to aim at the skies and be the best in all we do. You sacrificed everything to make your children who they are today. And by God's grace, they will make you proud. You are you not be here to see, but we thank God for the sacrifices you made. You called me honey, Nyandebo. You told me to always look at you when I dress up because you are my mirror. I can still hear you telling me, honey, you are the best. I love you. You said that so many times in a day. You were a fun, loving, happy, good lucky person who made everyone around you happy. Your grandson, Kwame, whom you refer to as grandmother's best, would miss you greatly. He knew the sound of your car and will run to take your bag when you come home from work. A few weeks ago, you were so happy and full of life at the adoring ceremony of your second grandson, John, who will never know you and is in part of a grandfather's love. Two days before your demise, you told me that we had everything to be thankful for. That God has really been good to us. You reflected on your life's journey from that small, obscure village in Selu in the Mongere district to your present status. Your plan was to raise the standard of your people in the village so that they will, they will all be self-reliant, admire your humility, and selfless dedication to God and humanity. When I complained about your heavy work schedule and lack of rest because we never had to get with sleep in 12 years, you promised me it won't be long because at your retirement in four years, we will have all the time in the world for your family. You just couldn't wait for that day as you already started counting down the days. You were elected bishop at a time when the Saudi annual conference was at its lowest, but through hard work and self-dedication, Hard work and education, you lifted up its banner for the whole world to see. You are a selfless, dependable, reliable, dedicated, honest, persevering, committed, humble young man full of life and energy. You traveled the world, soliciting funds to invest in the conference. You invested in people, encouraged both young and old to get the best in life. You advocated for scholarships for people. churches, wealth and orphanage, child rescue center, and embarked on many development projects. When you came back home from pursuing your master's in the USA, you were denied a job at the conference office. By the grace of God, you established an orphanage, child rescue center, which to the glory of God has produced prominent men and women in society. You were highly intelligent, a dreamer, a visionary leader. Your dream was to make the Saharan Annual Conference the best in spite of all the difficulties and challenges. Unfortunately, you are not given the opportunity to actualize all your dreams. Right from the day you took up office, people have been counting down the days for you to vacate your city. What was your crime? Was it because you were development oriented? Was it because you spoke against immorality, idolatry, and other vices in the church and society? Was it because you are forthright and honest? Or was it because you stood for justice for all? You tried to do your best, but all that is understood you. You are not the first to have gone through these trials. Be reminded that the blood cried out for God's vengeance. 
Joseph was hated by his own brothers because he was a dreamer. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, went to meet all. He was rejected by his own people and died a shameful death on the cross for us all. But remember, Judas never felt at peace with the blood money. He died in disgrace with him. Like Christ, you are betrayed and abandoned by those you loved and died in a mysterious death in the hands of strangers. One point. With Christ in the vessel, who will smile at the storm. The enemy has done his worst, but God will turn the situation around for our own good. We will not break the hand because we have Jesus. You have your special, unique gift of bringing people together. No one will ever be compared to you, my love. You had a mark, you made a mark, and you are simply the best. You are gone, but your dreams will never die. Your legacy will live on. The time for your death may not have been better planned, for you are struck in active service on your way to a funeral of one of your pastors. There are many unanswered questions, but God knows all. Your death, like an earthquake, shook the whole world. The enemy meant to shame you, but God used it for people to know that you are a great man of God. You will, we will miss you dearly, honey. The conference will miss you, your friends, partners, colleagues in the Council of Bishops. And many lives you touched, those, even those who never met you, are mourning your death. Like Paul in 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8, you have fought a good fight. You have finished your course. You have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for you a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give you on that day. We will always cherish your memories for you. Sleep and take your rest. Let me invite the president of the Conference Council on Finance and Administration, Dr. Ian Kamara, to give a tribute on behalf of the annual conference. Bishop Yambaso should be elogized in this church by me. However, as president of the Sierra Leone Annual Conference Council of Finance and Administration, I have the sad privilege of giving this eulogy. I supported Bishop Yambaso when he aspired to be a bishop. Although he was a stranger to me, the Spirit led me to support him. We were introduced to each other when he became bishop. Since then, we became friends, and I supported his vision for the conference, though not blindly. We did not and could not always agree. We disagreed to agree. Bishop Yambasu was an example of an individual who can go through the breaking points and not break. As he himself told us in his reading Episcopal Address, I quote, my life has been a long, winding, rugged, and painful journey, sometimes characterized by hard times, failures, dejection, disappointment, and abandonment by people who I have held in the highest esteem and whom I have most trusted to guide me through this journey. End of quote. He took over an office that we could describe as bankrupt, as there was no money to carry out its activities nor pay salaries of pastors and other staff who had not received salaries months before he took over. Staff for that was no With all of these problems, he never gave up. He was a humble man who was not pretentious and never allowed the honors that he received or roles that he assumed to change him from the way he always was. When he became bishop, he requested all to address him simply as bishop instead of the right reverend, my Lord Bishop, His Lordship, the Bishop, even though he agreed that these titles are honorable. Bishop has several positions. From all of the, the, the tributes, we've heard about the position, the, the positions that he held. 
this were prominent position, but he never changed his demeanor. He was always the same. He was a strong believer in the court where there is no vision, the people perish. Soon after he took office as bishop, he highlighted his vision, Vision 2020, a 10 year strategic plan of action for the United Methodist Church Tinagu. The key priorities identified are Paloco Recovery Project, the United Methodist University, Education, Health, and Evangelism and Church Development. Until his death, he worked assiduously with members of his conference and partners in mission to pursue and implement these priorities. I'll just highlight how far Bishop Yambasu went. Bishop Yambasu would not have achieved all of this if he did not have the support of his staff, conference staff, United Methodist members in Sierra Leone, and also his partners. He could not have done it alone. So he had all of the support of the United Methodist in Sierra Leone, as well as partners in mission. Today, there is no district in Sierra Leone that does not have a United Methodist presence. There are United Methodist churches in all the districts. The pastors have, have improved conditions and are better trained. Some pursue PhDs, others masters, and bachelor degrees in theology. With his ardent desire to improve on the education system, he fought for the establishment of the United Methodist University Seminary to provide a well-rounded education with the motto excellence, integrity, and service. He, were, he witnessed the establishment of the university. It was his dream to make it the best, but he did not need to realize this. As we say, man proposes, God disposes. It is now our responsibility to keep that his dream alive by promoting the university to the level desired by Bishop Yamasu. I am sure we'll be doing all of that. Year after year, people donate towards the establishment of the university during conference, and they continue to donate towards the establishment of the university. Today also, our hospitals and clinics have improved facilities to provide accessible, affordable, and quality health care services. It was also in constant conversation with our partners in mission to actualize the Paloma Recovery Project. Bishop Yamasu made friends easily and he maintained them. Since we became friends in 2009, we remained so until his death. He was a good pastor and bishop who lived the beautiful reality of our faith. He served you and me and everyone to the best of his ability. With pastors and other people who worked with him, he had a brotherly relationship of concern, care, and support. With his multi-faith colleagues, he had a relationship of respect and trust. He was a disciplined person. For him, transparency and accountability were key when dealing with people. Conference will continue with this practice. Bishop Yambasu accomplished a lot in his lifetime, but he did not do it alone. He did this with the support of the United Methodist in Sierra Leone, his partners in mission, and all of his friends. Let us all celebrate the life he lived. So, Mrs. Millicent Yambasu, Mama Bishop, as I usually call you, the children and other members of the family, we, the United Methodists in Sierra Leone, are saying, take heart. God will grant you solace. May we also assure you that your husband left a transparent and accountable system, and that will be followed. Our beloved bishop, the ambassador, you lie in your casket like a command soldier who smashed the last defense of the enemy and waiting to report to the general saying, mission accomplished. Indeed, like Paul, you have fought a good fight and have won. Go in peace and may God grant you eternal grace. May your memory be a blessing to us all. To my people of God, with all that is going on today in our churches, in our country, and in our world, the best thing that we can do is to leave this edifice and honor the legacy of Bishop Yamasu by simply being kind to those we meet. 
and by supporting this unfinished project. May God bless us all. I was just going to say that nature has been very kind to us when I started hearing the pouring of the rain and we still do have a certain need to, to, to attend at the Leicester Peak and therefore we will be doing some readjustments on the program to allow us to complete this session in good time to be there and uh, perform the next ceremony. But let me quickly quickly recognize, we will recognize the people as they come. Let me quickly recognize uh, the friend of Bishop Yavasuz, um, Bishop Ajibokold. Cole just came in. Bishop Ajibokold, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Bishop, uh, Archbishop Tamba Charles, we worked together. I can be a witness to that. When things are very tough with Bishop Yamasu, Bishop from Barrett stood by him. Thank you very much for being here with us. Bishop Tamba Kumar from the CCSO and Bishop Stokmanga from the Borders to the Anglican Church, Bishop Bami Uma of the Westphalian Church, Bishop Mark Gube of the Methodist Church of Leon. We'll continue recognizing you as you as a student from and um, as we have time to do that. The Mass Choir of the United Methodist Church will now render an anthem in memory of our dear Bishop. No, na kiku na kiku. Na this man do na dey kiku. Yes, yes. Check to let us know what's there.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will never again hear the voice of my great and famous bishop calling me Ashi. Who's are you doing? Ashi. Let's go. The, the writer of the next hymn says, In peace their sacred ashes rest, fulfill their day's endeavor. They bless the earth and they are blessed of God and man forever. Our hymn of proclamation is the hymn number 4, item 12. Now praise be great and famous men. Thank you. 